what you expect from others and what is expected of you needs to be open and clear every time. And once it is, مُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ They fulfill it to the full. It is a religious obligation to fulfill it. You absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have to do it. And don't guilt people into doing things. And you shouldn't get guilted into doing things either. Some of you are volunteers at masjids or help out at a Sunday school. And they say, hey, could you get this? Could you get that? Could you get the napkins next time? Could you get this next time? Okay, inshallah, 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 inshallah. And then you forget, I asked you to get the napkins. You didn't get them? You know the ayah says they fulfill the promises whenever they make them. <laughs> Want me to read it to you? وَالْمُفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَهْدُ I memorized that part just for you. You know? You know what you need to do? You need to learn to say no. You need to learn to say, I can't. It's not the end of the world. People will make a face at you. You will not die. Really? You can't? Seriously? You can't? Yep. Seriously? I cannot. I do it all the time. Feels great. <laughs> Feels great. Brother, we have this very important Islamic project. I'm sure you do. You need to be a part of it. I can't. Brother, don't you care about Islam? I do. But what about this Islamic project? I can't. Brother, seriously, you can't? We need you. I know. I can't. I have too many things I'm already involved in. And they are kind of Islamic also. And I'm sure your work is Islamic. But it's not my work, it's your work, and you have to do it, and I make dua for you. If I have the free time, if I have the ability, I can try and help, but right now I can't. I just can't. I have way too many commitments. I have way too many obligations. I can't. Astaghfirullah, brother, we thought you'd help Islam. <laughs> you were wrong. Move on with life. <laughs> Saying no is hard sometimes because people are really good at guilt tripping you. They're really good at making you feel bad and you're like, oh, okay, fine. Don't do it. If you can't do it, don't do it. Do things because you want to and because you know you can, not because you feel guilty. Don't be guilted into stuff. I've been guilted into stuff a long time in my life. Now I have no shame left, no guilt left. So I just, <laughs> no, I can't. It's all good, you know? And people will use the worst kinds of guilt trips. Oof. So good at it. I was spending 22 hours in Canada. 20, not 24, 22 hours. Flights in the morning at Fajr, after Fajr. I land there after a stop flight. I get driven straight to the Jummah Khutbah. From Jummah Khutbah, some lunch, maybe 30 minutes of kind of a shut eye. Then straight to a program from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Then people's questions until midnight. And a guy comes up to me and says, Brother, can you come to our masjid for Fajr to give a talk to the youth? And I said, I can't. I have a flight right at Fajr. Brother, I know we're just a small masjid. And it's only going to be a few youth. And you're only used to doing programs for thousands of people. But please, it's the house of Allah. You should come. Um... I can't. I understand that it's not a famous program and it's not going to be recorded for YouTube, but you should still try to come. Um, I have children at home and I'm going to catch that flight. I can't. Astaghfirullah, that's what I thought. He walks away. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I'm fine. I don't need to make that guy happy. I don't need to prove to him that I'm not doing this for the sake of fame or whatever. I don't have a, like a heavy conscience that I need to clear and just go to him or go to that program just to prove to myself that I'm sincere or whatever. I don't have those issues. He's got the issues. I don't have the issues. It's okay. He can live with his issues. He should see a therapist later on. I'm going to catch my flight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, have breakfast with my kids. I'm, I'm cool. I'm fine. Don't get guilted. وَالْمُفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِ مِذَا عَهَدُوا إِذَا عَهَدُوا is important here. When you make a promise, you're stuck. When you made a promise, that's it. You gotta give. 
you got to fulfill. But think a lot before you give in, before you make a promise. You know, you, have, you take your commitment seriously, which is why you don't overcommit, don't overextend, don't overpromise, and underdeliver. Don't do that. Okay? And if you do that in your life, you're going to pay not only religiously, in this life. In this life, there's lots of problems. People consider you unreliable. You're not going to have good professional references. People will not recommend you. If you have a business, it will not grow. If you have friends, they will not, they will not call on you, and which means you cannot call on them. You're going to miss out on a lot in life if you don't learn this lesson. Make commitments and stick with them, and don't make commitments that you know you can't stick with. Be comfortable with saying no. وَالْمُفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمِ إِذَا عَهْدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ And at the end of it all, Allah says, وَالصَّابِرِينَ And over and above everything else, the people who are persevering and patient and constant, when it comes to times of conflict, الْبَأْسَاء Times of conflict, in other words, there are tensions against Islam, there's social pressure that you should not live according to the establishing of prayer and giving zakah and giving to others and fulfilling your promises. There's social pressure for you to become like everyone else. These are times of ba'sa, times where there's tensions of war or tensions of conflict. Waddarra, and they still stay concept constant even when times of great difficulty come. Adarra is also referred to as economic difficulty. Times are money's tough, you don't have a lot of money, the job is no longer there. You know, economically things are difficult, you're still a giving person, you're still a charitable person, you're still committed to Islam, you're still not going to earn money the haram way, you're going to stick with it. This is the sabirina fil ba'sa wa darra. And even sabirin heen al ba's, even in the middle of the battlefield, you're not going to run away from your commitments. Even if you're in the midst of battle, heen al ba's. Now notice the word as ends with een, and al mufun ends with un. This een at the end is actually there because that's why I translated it as over and above everything else. That's why that een is there at the end of as sabirin. And this is important because all of the things that Allah described as good in this ayah, from our faith, to giving, to praying, to giving zakah, to fulfilling our promises, all of those things, if you're not steady and regular and constant with them, they amount to nothing. You remember the climax of everything in Surah Al-Asr was with what? The sabr? The climax of everything here is what? وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّةِ What was the first condition in Surah Al-Asr? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Here, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ Then there we had وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Good deeds. Are there good deeds mentioned here? Yeah. وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَسَائِلِ الْمَفِرِّقَى they encourage each other, they counsel each other to the truth, just like they fulfill each other's promises here. وَالْمُفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَهْدُ And then, there finally it ended, وَتَوَصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ And here, وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَى وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ It's the same four lessons, isn't it? It's more details now, but it's the same four. The foundation is the same as Surah Al-Asr. That's why this ayah is... not Further elaboration of what Allah already said in Surah Al-Asr. And look at how Allah ends at the end. He says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا Those are the people who've actually been truthful. These are truthful people. They prove to me that they're good. People who lived like this, who balanced all of these obligations. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُتَّقُونَ And those are the people who actually were able to protect themselves. They were able to protect themselves. I'm not translating muttaqun as pious or righteous, as like some of your translations say. I'm translating it as people who protect themselves. Because ittaqa in Arabic literally means to take pr protection for yourself. Now the idea is, the question is then, protect yourself from what? You remember the beginning? How was goodness described? Like land? And if you're in, you're in danger when you're at sea? So if you've really been able to protect yourself, you're people of, you're people of taqwa. That's why muttaqoon at the end. 
The other just slight thing before I end um, that I didn't get to mention is something very beautiful about you know the angels, the book, and the prophets. Look at the angels, they're plural. Al Malaika, angels. Al Kitab is singular, the book. The prophets are plural again. The prophets are plural again. Do we believe in all the prophets? Yes. Do we believe in all the angels? Yes. But which book are we supposed to follow? Just the Quran. We can't follow all the books because they've been changed. They can't, they, they've been changed. The, the only book you follow is the one that's given to you. And if this ayah was about people that lived 2,000 years ago, then the only book they had at the time, if the only book was Torah, then it's only Torah. It's not any other book they're obligated to follow. So whichever book came at the hands of a prophet, that's the book you're supposed to follow. For us, it's not all the books. It's which book? The Qur'an. So now Allah is saying, don't look for goodness in other books. Look for goodness in this book. Just one book, Al-Kitab. And, and through this book, you'll believe in all of the prophets anyway. All of the prophets, they, they, your beliefs will become correct. Okay, so this is a good overview of the contents of Ayatul Bir. Just once again, the purpose of sharing this ayah with you was to illustrate two things. One was the difference between moral goodness and religious goodness, and how both of them are combined in this ayah. The other purpose of it was that I want you to be clear, if you want to be considered good as far as Allah's definition of good, then you begin with what Allah begins with, your belief. Then you go to the, the goodness towards other people. Then your obligations to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is a matter of priority. Not timeline, like one day I'll be good to people, the next day I'll pray, not like that. But in your head, like what's your priority? You're supposed to be really good to people around you first. First and foremost. And then if you can be good to those you see, then you can be good to the one you can't even see. That's Allah. Right? That's, that's the progression of it.